So let's uh, shift gears a little bit. And first, of course, the death of uh, Otinoka Zhuang, shocking to, to everybody. Um, for you, how did you receive the news? Where were you? I was at the hospital mm -hmm. when he died. Okay. Um, it was a normal day for me. I was going about my duties. I remember I was at the offices of SAP on that particular day, mm -hmm. talking about some projects to revolutionize the way we do insurance in this, in this country. And um, I got home at about 9 p.m. And uh, 9.30, I received a call from my brother who was in Mombasa that the senator had just been admitted. Mm -hmm. And I thought it could just be a flu or something easy. But, uh, you know, something tugged at my heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when I heard he was at Mata, I, I dashed to Mata. I, I found him when he was in the emergency room and uh, they were trying to resuscitate him. And I was there for about uh, 45 minutes uh, before he was pronounced dead. It mm -hmm. was extremely extremely shocking for mm, us mm. and to have had that happen a lot of speculation the test we understand were taken abroad what can you tell us now the viewers of course as a public figure many uh, were keen to find out what had happened is there a conclusion as to what kills uh, Kajuang your brother the samples were taken to Germany mm -hmm. for further investigation uh, the results have not been uh, conveyed back to us uh, I remember the samples were taken alongside those of uh, the late Fidel Castro Odinga, mm -hmm. uh, the son to the Prime Minister, and we are still waiting for the results. Okay. Um, we pray that it will not be found that there was a human hand in the death. Do you believe there was one? Foul play? Um, the circumstances were uh, extremely abrupt, and this is a gentleman who did not have any known issue uh, of, of, you know, that would uh, trigger cardiac arrest. But I would want to leave it to the scientists mm -hmm. to tell us exactly what caused the death. Yeah. So after this and then, of course, the whole situation of who's going to take up that particular position. You, in the same interview with Victor, said that you consulted with your wife first and that she underwent some counseling, you described it, to allow her, uh, to get her to that place where she was okay with you actually vying. Talk to us about that. Why did she need counseling? Was she not for the idea? Uh, yes, it was a, a, funda a very radical shift from uh, what we were used to. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, were professionals. She's an underwriter somewhere, I'm an IT expert somewhere, and, and life was fairly straight and predictable. Going into politics means that my allegiance shifts from my family to one million people who reside in Homer Bay County. Uh, that, that was significant. And uh, if I was to become a senator, as per the discussion at that at point time. in time, it meant that she would also have to play a public role. Mm -hmm. And she didn't feel she was very ready at that point in time to play the public role. Um, my wife's uh, parents were also in politics in Uganda, and uh, the dad was exiled, and she grew up without the father. Uh, the dad was exiled when uh, Idi Amin took over power. Mm -hmm. and, and so there, there is that feeling, there's that memory that she still has and a bad taste in the mouth uh, as a result of yeah, politics. Yeah. Uh, but when we discussed and we agreed that we are going to make the sacrifice on behalf of the family and for the sake of the people of Homer Bay, uh, you know, we sat down and said, let's do it and we left it in the hands of God. Mm. We, we did a lot of praying, uh, we did a lot of soul searching before we finally agreed. Mm. Uh, and uh, the fact that I consulted my wife you know, it just goes to underscore the importance of family in my life. Because, yes, I could go and consult the public gallery, but at the end of the day, it is about me and my wife and my child. Mm. Uh, it is about us sacrificing our life for the benefit of the people. I felt that was important. And in my campaigns, I've also underscored the importance of empowering women and the girl child. For okay. a long time, yeah. we have assumed that women are just objects who uh, should not question mm. or who should not be involved in decision making. That just goes to underscore the fact that in my leadership style, I would like to involve women a lot. As, a lot as, and as much as possible.